Baba God, I hail your name, oh. Nobody fit them like you. Baba God, I chose Saloy. Now you be my God and King. Baba God, I hail your name, oh. Nobody fit them like you. Baba God, I chose Saloy. Now you be my Lord and King. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. We hail your name. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. We hail your name. Baba God, I hail your name, oh. Yes, nobody fit that like you. Baba God, I chose our Lord. Now you be my Lord and King. Baba God, I hail your name, oh. Yes, nobody fit that like you. Baba God, I chose our Lord. Now you be my Lord and King. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. Baba God, I hail, I hail your name. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. Baba God, I hail, I hail your name. Baba God, I give you glory for all the things you have done. Baba God, I hail your name, oh. Now you be my King of Kings. Baba God, I hail your name, oh, for loving me like no one else. Baba God, I chose our Lord. Salvation you bring to me. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. Baba God, I hail. I hail your name. Baba God, I hail, hail. Baba God, I hail. Baba God, I hail. I hail your name, Baba God, I hail your name, oh. You went to the cross for my sake, Baba God, I chose Salon. My salvation today, now you, Baba God, I hail, hail, Baba God, I hail, Baba God, I hail, I hail your name, Baba God, I hail, hail. Hail, Baba God, I hail, I hail your name. Yes, so, oh, just the hail Baba God in name because eh, I am saved today. I am rejoicing. I am sitting here dancing, praising God, studying the word of God because of salvation. If he didn't go to the cross, died a shameful death, he left glee and glamour. He left glory. He left every single thing beautiful beyond word description. I call it psychedelic. He left it all and came to earth to die for your sakes and mine. We didn't even deserve it, but yet he did. And you know the funny part? He knew there was a possibility that we wouldn't even accept that gift. He's given on the cross, but he went ahead and died anyways. How sweet, how beautiful can it get? How exceptional can it get? It can only be God. That's why I hail his name. I chose him salute. A cotti cafe. A toile. I have come to give you toile. To give you worship. What, what have you come before God today to do? God is just too much. He is just too much. Too, too much. We don't deserve it. But yet he goes all out and still does these amazing things for us. God is too, too, too much. And I heal him for that. I really do heal him. Okay, welcome on board all these amazing people. All my favorite, favorite auntie in the world is here. Auntie Priye, welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh my God, I actually did your birthday live stream. I forgot to send it to you. 
forgive thou my sins. <laughs> I'll go and see no more. Welcome, Mr. Raymond Henry. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I'm glad to have you here today. So let's go, let's go, let's go. If you're just tuning in, it's a chapter a day to keep you going, to boost your faith, to let you know who you are in Christ, the power you possess, the things you should be doing and should not be doing so that you can be able to live the life that Christ desires that you live here on earth and end up spending eternity with him in heaven. So that's why we study the Bible. And like I said, this was brought up because God was saying a whole lot of people are out there twisting the Bible, twisting the word of God, twisting the scriptures to actually um, get on with what they want to please their flesh, to, to get away with a lot of craziness. So they're twisting the word of God, twatting it and diluting it. So he says, okay. I need someone to do the undiluted word of God for me if they want to go viral. Because that was why I was going to God in the first place. I wanted to go viral on social media. And he wants to use the way that nobody's going to share glory with him. Like, oh, maybe it's because you did this and you've been doing this for a while. And so people know that you can do it well. And then you get it right you just get it right this one time and then everybody's like scrambling to want to listen to that but no he's using the unpopular the unconventional methods i'll put it that way because you and i both know like i told him you know i i always have a conversation with god he's my father so we have a conversation so i told him bible the bible is not so popular and it's becoming more and more unpopular by the day because of what people are doing with it and he's like you said you wanted to go viral and you want to go viral my way right so listen to me just go on there read the bible the, the whole idea from the start was to create an audio bible and while we're at it we get to listen and then we get to um study together you know talk about the scripture after reading it so if you desire to listen to an audio bible done by me it's not perfectly clean as in there are times i'll read something once and twice there are times i'll pause a little bit so i was giving him all these excuses and he says he's not here about the professionalism of the bible he's here about someone listening to the bible and it is not thwarted it is not diluted just having an opportunity to listen to the bible and of course he kind of encouraged me that a lot of people might just listen to the Bible who would never, who never naturally listen to it because I'm the one reading it. So what he was saying in essence is I have a couple of friends on my timeline or on my social media platforms who are just going to listen because I did it. Not because they are Bible people per se, but they're just going to listen because they like to listen to what I do. So that's a good thing. I, I felt a little bit happy that God um, he created me anyway, so you should know. <laughs> so I said, okay, use my voice. You know, I always sing that, use me as you please for anything that you want to do. So <clears throat> the truth is sometimes God is going to use your gift. What is giving you as a gift when you get off the world and come to the faith. And sometimes he's going to use something totally different. So don't just get so stuck to what you're doing. Maybe you're a music person. You've been singing. When you're in the world, you've been singing. And then you're coming to the faith. You're just feeling like, oh, God is automatically going to use you in singing when you become a Christian. It, it doesn't work like that. God is sovereign. He's dynamic. He can always do however he wants. You might come to the faith and he wants you to be a pastor instead. You might come to the faith and he wants you to be an amazing accountant instead, you know. Um, singing could just be a part-time thing, not really like the thing that he wants you to do like full-time, you know. So you need to be sensitive and flexible and dynamic. When it comes to God, you need to be very, very flexible because God is flexible like that and is very dynamic. And don't freak out because whatever he gives you to handle, he gives you that company provision to back it up whatever you need to do that thing so don't freak out i i am a living testimony of that i am a freaking living testimony of that god has moved me from a whole lot of places 
before he brought me here. You know, I, I've had a lot of people tell me, you should sing, you should do this, you should create an album. God has never told me that. But he has been using my voice to encourage people. He's now using my voice to create an audio Bible. He's now using my voice to encourage people and read the Bible and talk, you know, just like that. But he has never really said to me, um, do music. <clears throat> Reason being that I know if God wants me to do music, he's not going to get me copy people's music. He's going to minister to me and inspire me. I love integrity music a lot because those people there, it's not about, oh, I wrote the music. A lot of Africans, a lot of Africans. And that's why we can't go to the level that we have to. A lot of Africans just want to micromanage everything. So I'm the author. I'm the one who wrote the music. I must sing it. No, if you don't have a voice, find someone who does and give them to sing. And you both get your curts, your royalties or whatever. That's what integrity music does. There are lots of songs that Don Moy has sang and he didn't write them. There are lots of songs that Ron Kennelly has sang. He didn't write them. Donnie McCulkin. There are lots of those people who are part of Integrity Music that have sang some songs that they didn't write. They have their songs that they wrote by themselves. Yes, fine. But there are some that they've sang that they didn't write. Because they can sing those songs well. And so the people who wrote the song gave it to them to sing it. But it looks like in most cases, most people in Africa, oh, because I wrote the song, I should sing it, even if my voice is not going to be palatable to people's ears. People are supposed to love, love what they're listening to, to listen to it, right? Sometimes you listen to music, it's just so dry. You know, someone just because they have a good voice, they just go into the Bible and pick a scripture and sing it out. No. There's just no spirit in it. Because you think you have a good voice? No. That's not how it works. Let the spirit of God lead and guide you to do what you have to do. So like I said, be flexible. That you are singing in the world doesn't necessarily mean that when you come to the faith, God is going to use your voice for singing. That you are dancing in the world doesn't necessarily mean that when you come to the faith, God is going to use your dance skills for ministry. Oh yeah, you're in the drama club in, in the world doesn't necessarily mean that God is going to translate that. And you're going to be a drama minister in, um, in when you become a child of God. There are options. There are times when he will do that. And there are times when he wouldn't. He will do something entirely different. So be flexible. I don't know who needed to hear that. Okay, so what we normally do on a chapter a day is when we come on here, we sing. We used to have a lot of things that we do, but some of them got done. We got done with them, so we had to let them go. But singing is still continuous, and I think it's going to be there till the end. And then um, praying, you know, we started this at some point. We, we started a chapter a day, and I wasn't praying when we started. Neither was I praying when we finished. And when I realized it, I didn't kill myself. I didn't beat myself up for it. I felt bad, kind of, but I didn't beat myself up for it because I realized it. So what do I need to do? Just start from there. It's never too late to start. So I started. So when we get to sing, we get to pray and hand over the session to God. And then the next thing is the birthday party where we give people shout outs those who have their names on our birthday book we give them a shout out based on who we know them to be so that the world should know that these people are this amazing so that the people themselves should also know they're that amazing i say i'm the word i'm going to be the worst eulogist ever because i don't think i'll be writing any messages in any books for any person who is gone i tell them who they are right now while they are alive while they're still here while it is important because when you tell people who they are, they get to repeat it. When you reward whatever is good, it gets repeated. So if people know that this thing they're doing is good, they'll do it again and again and again. I don't know about you, but that's me. If people um, celebrate me for something that I'm doing, I'll do some more and some more. And I'll do it for many more people because I know it's a good thing. 
okay and so we get to give these people a shout out we pray for them and then we get right on to the bible party what's the bible party about it's us reading the bible after we read the bible we get to talk about it we get to discuss about it mm -hmm. that's what it's called the bible party i know some people would have been wondering what's this girl talking about okay so that's bible party for you and then we hand over the session again to god thanking him for what he has done throughout the session and then we sign out that's simply what um a chapter a day is all about so let's go ahead and soon enough we're having a a channel a youtube channel that is all bible so um i have a youtube channel where i've been doing other things on it but i kind of feel like other messages get cut in between the Bible, in between the audio Bible, and it's not so funny. So for people who just want strictly Bible and all that, there is a channel that I'm, I'm creating for it. I started uploading a couple of videos on there. All that, like I would say, basically most of our sessions, especially for January, um, all of, no, for all of the New Old Testament, we've actually started putting them all on there especially this lives we're putting them all on um youtube we've started putting that on the channel we're hoping to get their audio bibles on there as well and all that so we would still keep putting it on the other channel but if you're the person who wants to go strictly just for the bible stuff then there's going to be a youtube channel for it okay so I'm hoping that you all get to enjoy together. You all get to support that as well. Um, follow on there and get to learn whatever you can learn there as we grow together. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today for this session of a chapter a day. We thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. This is the day you've made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. We just bless your holy name for always keeping us secure and safe to the glory of your name, for always providing, protecting, and guiding us in all that we do. You're the ancients of days. There is none like you. Thank you, King of Glory, for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Speak to us today in a very, very special way. Lord, only you know the desires of the heart of your children so only you can address because you know exactly those who are going to fall upon this message those who are going to stumble upon it those who are going to listen to it till the end lord you know exactly what each and every individual needs so father bring to light all that these people are going to be needing to get them to their next level to get them to fulfill purpose to get them to be the people that will manifest to the groaning nations that is waiting for their manifestation Lord, speak to us in a very special way, in a way that only you can. Increase while I decrease, so it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard throughout this session of a chapter a day. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, people. So let's go for the birthday, people. And today there's just one person on our birthday book, Mr. Echu Ayuk. Mr. H. Ayok, we actually got connected on Facebook, but I think I knew him before. I'm not sure exactly where, but I think I knew him before. But we got connected after. I, if we had met before, then good, but I'm not sure where. But I think I have. But if we haven't, the next time I got to meet him again was on social media, and it was good. He's also one of those persons who gets to encourage me. You know, people who encourage me to do what I do, I kind of take a liking to them, you know, um, and I hold them in high esteem because not everybody really likes your craft. Not everybody would really encourage you and support you with what you do, but he does. And he really tells me sometimes he watches and tells me what he um, what he got from the video. That is really encouraging. And I love it. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for being this amazing always coming through for me for always supporting my stuff i'm grateful i wish god could open my heart so you see how grateful i am happy birthday to you and i wish you all the best there is ever so today is the 13th of january we're not only going to be praying for mr h u ayuk we're going to be praying for every single person who is born on the 13th of january so if you stumble upon this live stream and you have someone who was born on the 13th of january you'll be doing them due diligence to send this to them so that they can receive the prayers and it will work in their lives you just never know you just never know 
you have a friend, a relative, or a loved one who was born on the 13th of January, this is for them too. Because this prayer is going to go for all of them. Well, before we go on, our Bible party is going to be coming from the book of Leviticus chapter 25. And it has 55 verses. Oh, averagely long. We've not read this in a long while. We've not read as much as 55 verses in a very long while. Yeah, but we're ready for it. We're well able. So let's pray for the birthday people and get right on to the Bible party. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born on this 13th day of January, oh Father, I pray you bless them, oh God. Bless them with blessings beyond their reasonable understanding. Bless them in ways that only you can, Father. I pray even as they start this new year of their lives, oh Father, as the pages get open, you'll write beautiful stories, stories that will cause them to sing, dance, and rejoice to the glory of your name. Perfect all that concerns them, oh Lord. Father, this once their gifts are going to make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men, oh Lord. Father, that they're going to keep shining brighter and brighter up onto the perfect day lord that you cause them to increase in wisdom and start you gaining favor before god and before men father bless them in such a way that this gift is going to encompass them as a shield round about that no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper because they're going to be declared touch not lord i pray oh god that are going to be a blessing in their generation and beyond and people who come in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings because there's going to be an overflow of blessings upon their lives perfect all that concerns them O lord give them a sound 126 states a state of continuous laughter and singing that if you tarry to come same time next year they'll be here testifying of your goodness upon their lives and the marvelous things that you've done to give them reasons to smile sing and dance cause them to be trailblazers pace setters and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you're going to take them to the top and cause them to stay permanently at the top by teaching them strategies, techniques, and methods that are necessary for them to stay at the top on. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to open doors and opportunities for them that only you can open and shut every door that is not supposed to be open. Any door that is not of you, Lord, shut it in the mighty name of Jesus. Divinely disconnect them from any person and anything that is causing them to stagnate or retrogress. And divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to progress and be the best versions and glorify your name in the process. Father, I pray. That even as they are fulfilling purpose, there come a time in everybody's life where they feel overwhelmed. They feel like they want to give up. They feel like they want to back out. They feel like, oh, this wasn't really God, but it is. Lord, I pray that they're going to hear a voice that would say to them, this is the way it walked out in it. So they're not going to stray the part. They're going to stay on course and they're going to fulfill purpose to the glory of your name. Father, I pray wherever they need help, help is going to show up for them because you're going to strategically position their destiny helpers. Those people that you've preordained, that you've purposed, that they're supposed to do something amazing in their lives to cause them to go to their next level. Father, I pray that these people are going to be strategically positioned in their journey as they go on in life. Father, that they are also going to see those they are supposed to be destiny helpers to so that they're going to be able to be answered to those people's prayers as you use them to do it. Father, I will just give you all the glory. Whatever the hands lay, whatever the lady hands on prosper because your word says so. And wherever they tread their feet upon, give it to them as a possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, do with them what only you can do and no man else. Give them reasons to smile real reasons, tangible reasons to smile. It's not just about the joy of the Lord that is being their strength, but they'll really have reasons to truly be grateful and smile to the glory of your name. <clears throat> Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you always hear and answer. Lord, cause them to be able to go and conquer their world in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen, let it be so. Amen, amen, amen. We plead the blood of Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. On the prayers. Amen, as we have prayed. Amen, let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen, as we have prayed. Amen, amen. Amen. We seal every prayer with the blood of Jesus and it's going to be as we've prayed in their lives in Jesus' name. Welcome, Mom Tipa Mavis, woman of God on fire. We've missed you on the chapter a day. Yes, we've been sort of inconsistent with the time. Sometimes we come earlier, sometimes we come later because of the way our week has been. We're so sorry. 
<laughs> hope you're good hope family is good too welcome mr kika carol man of god who does a waiver and a medical practitioner per excellence hope you're doing great happy new year to you all we miss you so so much that's also another very um um, diligent listener of a chapter a day and we're glad that you came here today he has also been away for a while and uh, I know that these are people who are really very busy but when they get the chance the least chance they get the least opportunity they get they are a part of chapter a day and I really take it to heart I'm grateful that these people come on here every single time to listen to participate to give their own opinion when it comes to that, to give their lessons learned. We all are learning together. And so sometimes some rema can really come from some other person and it ministers to me as well. Oh, believe me, sometimes some things I say here when I'm editing the videos to get the Bible, um, to get the audio Bible out, when I'm editing the videos, I'm like, <gasps> Princess, did you say that? Yeah, God said that through me and he knows that I needed it too. So that's how I get to listen. Okay, so thank you all for always being here, for sharing, supporting, liking, and giving your um, um, contributions and all that. I really, really do appreciate you. I don't take it for granted. Thanks for honoring me. So like I said, let's hop on. Let's dive in. Let's drive in. Let's, whichever way you're going to come in, let's just get on a chapter a day. The Bible party is ready. So it's Leviticus chapter 25, and like I said, it has 55 verses. So that's going to be an averagely long read. I hope we all are ready for it. I don't know about you, but ready or not, here I come. Leviticus chapter 25, and the Lord spake unto Moses in the month of Sinai. Oh my. That skipped, people. Sorry. So let's go. We'll take it from the top again. Leviticus chapter 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses in, the Mount, in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, and gather in the first fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest thou shalt not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed, for it is a year of rest unto the land. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meet for you, for thee, and for thy seven, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy stranger that sojourneth with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beast that are in thy land, shall all the increase thereof be meat. And thou shalt number seven sabbaths of, of years unto thee, seven times seven years, and the space of the seven sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then thou, then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. And ye shall hallow the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession and ye shall return every man unto his family a jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you ye shall not sow neither reap that which groweth of itself in it nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine of thy vine undressed for it is the jubilee it shall be holy unto you ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field in the year of this jubilee ye shall return every man unto his possession and if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor or buyest aught of thy neighbor's hand ye shall not oppress one another 
according to the number of years after the jubilee thou shalt buy of thy neighbor and according unto the number of years of the fruits ye shall sell unto thee according to the multitude of years thou shalt increase the price thereof and according to the fewness of years thou shalt diminish the price of it for according to the number of years of the fruits doth he sell unto thee ye shall not therefore oppress one another but thou shalt fear thy god for i am the lord that your god wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and ye shall dwell in the land in safety and the land shall yield her fruit and ye shall eat your fill and dwell therein safety therein in safety and if ye shall say what shall we eat the seventh year behold we shall not sow nor gather in our increase then i will command my blessings upon you in the seed year and it shall bring forth fruit for three years and ye shall sow the eighth year and eat yet of all fruits until the ninth year until her fruits come in ye shall eat of the old store the land shall not be sold for ever for the land is mine for ye are strangers and sojourners with me and in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land if thy brother be waxen poor and had sold away some of his possession and if any of his kin come to redeem it then shall ye redeem that which his brother sold and if the man have none to redeem it and himself be able to redeem it then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it that he may return unto his possession but if he be not able to restore it to him then that which is sold shall remain in the hand of him that had bought it until the year of jubilee and in the jubilee it shall go out and he shall return unto his possession and if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold within a full year may he redeem it and if it be not redeemed within a space of a full year then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations it shall not go out in the jubilee but the house of the villages of the villages which have no wall round about them shall be counted as the fields of the country they may be redeemed and they shall go out in the jubilee notwithstanding the cities of the levites and the houses of the cities of their possession may the levites redeem at any time and if a man purchase and if a man purchase of the levites then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of jubilee for the houses of the cities of the levites are their possessions among the children of israel but the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold for it is their perpetual possession and if thy brother be waxen poor and fallen in decay with thee then thou shalt relieve him yea though he be a stranger or a sojourner that he may live with thee take thou no usury of him or increase but fear thy god that thy brother may live with thee thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury nor lend him thy victuals for increase i am the lord your god which brought you forth out of the land of egypt to give you the land of canaan and to be your god and if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee thou shalt not compel him to serve as a born servant but as an hired servant and as a sojourner he shall be with thee and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee and then shall he depart from thee both he and his children with him and shall return unto his own family and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return for they are my servants which i brought forth out of the land of egypt they shall not be sold as bondmen thou shalt not rule over him with rigor 
but shall fear thy God, both thy born men and thy born maids, which thou shalt set, which both thy born men and thy born maids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heat of the hidden that are round about you. Of them shall he buy born men and born maids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that do that do sojourn among you, of them shall he buy, and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possessions. And ye shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you, to inherit them for a possession. They shall be your born men forever. But over your brethren, the children of Israel, ye shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again, one of his brethren may redeem him. Either his uncle or his uncle's son may redeem him, or any that is nigh of kin unto him of his family may redeem him, or if he is able, he may redeem himself. And he shall reckon with him that bought him from the year that he was sold to him unto the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall be according to shall be according unto the number of years, according to the time of an hired seven shall it be with him. If there be yet many years behind, according unto him, he shall give again the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years unto the year of Jubilee, then he shall count with him, and according unto his years shall he give him again the price of his redemption. And as a year and as a yearly hired and as a yearly hired seven shall he be with him, and the others shall not rule with rigor over him in thy sight. And if he be not redeemed in these years, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee, both he and his children with him. For unto me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Okay, that was quite a read. And uh, we're going to go through again and see what we've learned. So we're going to look through this. Uh, but one thing I learned is God was giving these people an opportunity. There were a set of people that he had chosen. And he says, these people are chosen. And regardless of what happens to them, there was a redemption. There was a time that they could be redeemed. It's basically like us, the children of God and the devil. There are some people that cannot be redeemed, like the devil. No matter what he does, even if he feels sorry for what he did, he doesn't have an opportunity anymore. He lost it. But we do have an opportunity. They say, except for blasphemy. I really don't know what could be considered blasphemy, though. But I know that if you sin, if you make a mistake, if you falter, even after you've given your life to Christ, you have the possibility of coming back and saying, Lord, I'm sorry. I've turned around and gone astray. Your love for me, I've betrayed. Your, your power we didn't recognize. Um, we have come to repent. That's a part of um, Panapesi Paul's song. It says, uh, Lord, we are sorry. We've turned around and gone astray. Your love for us, we have betrayed. Your power, we don't recognize. We can all repent. We all now repent. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. Bring down your glory. Okay? So we can come back and repent. We have an opportunity to come back. And that's why he says here that we'll be redeemed. But this time in the old, when Christ had not yet come, it had to be at a particular time. So people had to be slaves for 40 years, no, 50 years, 50 years. It had to be a jubilee season before they were going to be redeemed. And even somewhere in Exodus, we read that 
after this 50 years there were options of how you could get redeemed if you got married um before you be if you come if you got married before you became a slave when you're redeemed you can go out with your wife and your children but if you got married while you were bought as a slave you can't go with your husband you can't go with your children so it's obvious who would want to do that so the obvious thing was that you had to remain and if you had to remain you are not remaining under the fact that the man had made you remain you are remaining by choice so they had to do something and that's where i understood where boring of holes on ears came about because i was wondering like where did this thing of having holes on the ears come about it came about then and it was really for the men it was really for the men you know so if that man says okay he cannot go because he doesn't want to leave his children that he got while there he would have to stay but now so that his his master doesn't get sanctioned because he has stayed with the man for more than 50 years so he's supposed to be liberated but for him for his master not to get like oh he was the one who made that happen you you have to get that hole done on your ear so that's when people see you they'll be like okay you were a slave that refused not to go because you don't want to leave your family members. So you decided to stay a slave. <gasps> that wasn't funny. Oh yeah, that wasn't funny. That freaked me out. And so sometimes a lot of people ask me why I don't have holes. I don't, my holes are almost getting locked and I don't care about it. It's because I'm like, when I saw that, it kind of made me feel like I didn't need the hole on my ear. This is me and my personal revelation from that scripture. So I'm not saying that. Maybe you go read it and whatever the Holy Spirit mentions to you, it's fine. But people get to ask me over and over and over why I don't put on earrings. That's why. That was why. Felt like to me, I'm a slave. Who doesn't want to stop being a slave? Who doesn't want their liberty? I do. So, yeah, so basically that's what was happening. And there was a time that these people had to get free. But today, it's just within seconds, within minutes, you can sit in your bedroom and you're safe from, from sin. So um, um, being a slave was basically like you're still in sin. You're in the bondage of the enemy. And then you get freed when you're redeemed. Is when you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. So basically that's how it relates to us in our world today. These scenarios. So these people had up to 50 years to get this done. But today you can just in the flip, in the twinkle of an eye, one moment you're an unbeliever, you're in the calm of the enemy, you're, you're captive, and the next moment you're saved. All brand new by accepting the finished work of Christ on the cross. I don't know what you're waiting for. It's not complicated. Let nobody deceive you. It's as simple as ABC acknowledging the fact that you're a sinner you deserve punishment believing in your heart that christ came and died and took your place so that you should be safe and then confessing it it's abc acknowledge believe confess it's abc let nobody complicate it for you because a lot of us just feel like if it's not complicated it's not christianity no christianity is actually too simple so some people don't even take it seriously because they feel like, no, it has to be complicated. And in trying to complicate it now, we start making people run away from it, which is not supposed to be so. <laughs> I'm telling you, woman of God on fire, see, eh, the rules eh, not to fear. I, if I was in those days, I'm not sure I'd be able to cope. The rules were stringent. They were so strict. They were so serious. They were so, I mean, like, What? You, you are selling people and buying people. You buy land. You buy land. I'm telling you. <laughs> Imagine that you died before. So you're anticipating your freedom and you're working hard for all your life. And, oh my God. With this generation that a lot of people are even dying so young. I'm sure a lot of people would have died slaves. Being slaves. And you buy a land from somebody. You really buy the land with your money. But you know that after 50 years, you're supposed to give that land back. Me, I know good then. No. I would not even bother myself to go and buy from, from the Levites. Levites, their land, you cannot take it for forever. You have to give it back to them. 
there is some land that if you cannot pay the amount of money that is necessary that the person has had for those years, you will not be able to redeem it back. It, this, is, this is literally what is going on in the world right now. You know how when you give your things for shorty? So it's basically like these people are giving their land as shorty to get probably money or get something from the other person. And then the, the time range for them to get back their plot was 50 years. If you really didn't have money, you would have to wait for 50 years to get your land back. What? Some people die in the process. And then they say, if someone dies and they have a family member, their family member can redeem the land. If someone, you know, it's still basically the same thing. So it's just like next of king. When you go to create an account in the bank, you have a next of king, right? So if you're not there anymore, your next of king will be um, entitled to come and collect and take all those things if they have to. It's the same way. But this one, it's crazy, man. 50 years. 50 years. And then um, I remember there is a part that um, actually got to me when I was reading it. You know, sometimes it feels like we're scared to ask God questions. The funny thing is God knows your heart. He sees your heart. He knows that you have that thing that is troubling you. Why not just ask him? Why not just ask him already? Because it's like they've made us to feel like God is this big giant kind of, you know, person or something that is just there we just have to revere him yes we have to revere him it's like we cannot connect with him no god wants us to have a relationship with him you know how he used to come in the garden of eden in the cool of the day and have a swell time with moses with adam and eve that's how god wants it to be that's why christ came to reconcile us back to have that same kind of relationship with him that's what he wanted so you 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 can come to him and ask these people ask him Hey, Jesus, what are you saying? You're saying that when we come, um, we should not work. We should work for six years and the seventh year we should not work. How are we going to eat? That's what the people ask him. And he did not only give them what was supposed to be enough. He gave them what was supposed to be more than enough because they did not even envisage. The people were just envisaging what... See, God knows what you need. God sees the end from the beginning. Trust his ways. Trust God. Trust God. God, they asked him, what are we going to be doing in the seven year? You said we should not work. We should not have this anything. If things grow on their own, we should leave it there. It's a time where the land needs to rest. The land needs to go through a healing process itself before we come back. He says that on the seat year, He's going to give them what they'll need for three years, which is what they'll need for that sixth year, what they'll need for the seventh and the eighth year. Because when they'll be planting in the eighth year, it's only going to produce in the ninth year. So it looks like the things used to produce after a year. They didn't even think about it. They were bothered just about the seven year that they were not going to be working or they will eat. But God had already had a plan for them to have so much that is going to cover even for the year that they'll be planting because the land will just be getting back to itself. So it would start producing very well only in the ninth year. So he told them that I'm not, you should not even bother on the seat year. I'm not only going to be giving you for the seat and the seventh year, I'm going to be giving you for the seat seven and eighth year. See, God knows exactly what we need. He even knows what we need more. Adam was there jumping around and walking around, walking around, walking around in the garden of Eden. She be not God, be realized say, in it person. The Adam self didn't know. He had been naming all the animals, tiger, lion, this one, goat, dog. He didn't call no one woman. But as soon as woman appeared in front of him, he knew that he needed that. I'm sure when the time came and God provided for the sixth year and they were eating and eating and eating and going and they realized that it was in the ninth year that they would have, they, like they needed up to the ninth year, they needed provision for up to the ninth year. That's when they were like, oh my God, yeah, we're asking God just for one year, the year that we're not going to work. We didn't even know that we needed this for three years. See, God knows more than you do. Just trust him.
trust God. If he tells you that so in barren land like Isaac, please, please, by all means, so in barren land. If he tells you not to go to Egypt, even though it looks like the grass is greener on that side, no go Egypt. Lot looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. It was beautiful. But it ended in destruction. It is not how it looks. It is what God says about it. I remember the time when my dad was talking to me about this thing of divine positioning. He said that uh, if God tells you, go to a place where there are stones, just obedience will tell you that uh, you should go to that place where there are stones because God will turn stones to gold for your sake. And if he says, forget about the place where there is gold, it's because those golds that you're seeing can turn into stones with the flip of a finger. So obedience, it is the most important thing when it comes to God. And how you obey him when you cannot even hear him. You can only hear him when you have a personal relationship with him and you're studying the word of God. I don't know how God speaks to you, but God speaks to me in several ways in several ways and you can only know that this is god when you are communing with him when you have a personal relationship with him if i'm talking with the woman of god every single day if i'm talking with my tipa mevis every single day there is just no way i'll be mistaken with her voice right if i hear her voice anywhere i have people who literally i do a voice over for some other person and for some reason we get to be mutual friends with the person that I did the voice over for. Some people come and tell me and they say, Princess, did you do a voice over for this person? I was shocked to my bones. But yes, that's how much they know me because they know me. But if someone doesn't know me, the person will not be able to figure out that that was me who did that voice. No, right? Like I said, I've been away from my kid brothers for a couple of years now. Before, I could detect who is talking, even from a distance. I could detect who is who. I could detect if it was the youngest one or the older one who was talking. I could detect it perfectly. But it got to a point where I couldn't. I stayed away from them for just about a year or two. I could not differentiate who was who. That's the same thing. If you're having a close relationship with God, if you're fellowshipping and communion with God all the time, you'll be able to know his voice when he's the one speaking. And you'll be able to know when flesh is talking. Trust me, there's some things that the flesh wants. The flesh just wants what it wants. <laughs> and the flesh can so speak you think it's God. If you don't have a personal relationship with God. If Moses was not, in, if um, Abraham was not intuitive, he would have sacrificed Isaac. Oh yeah, devil, you don't want me to get my blessings from God. God told me to come and sacrifice this thing. Where are you coming from with this whole stupid idea of me taking a ram to sacrifice for in the place of my son? You don't want me to get my blessings there. Lie, lie to lie, lie. Pew, pew, pew. He will slash, he will slash Isaac there and kill. But he was sensitive and he knew the voice of God. So woman of God, I just listened to a message recently um, by Apostle um, Joshua Selman. It was really a beautiful message. So I want to relate it to something that happened to me. So when I was um, like, when I was like about 25 years old, I told God that I wanted to be married. I wanted to have my family, you know, you know how we have all these plans that we have, right? So me too, I have mine. Of course, I'm a human being. So I have my own plans like that. So within that age, oh my God, it was like everything was just falling in place. I, I really have, I was working, I was well to do and stuff like that. And everything was going good for me. I graduated from the university, man, I was just flying. I was just, I mean, so fly on point. And then I got into this relationship. I heard God. I heard God. The guy also heard God. We had a, we had a couple of confirmations from people. Okay, but now we have to relate to get to know that God spoke doesn't necessarily mean that everything is just going to fix itself. 
relationship is work. We have to put in the work, right? They say faith without work is dead. So we have to put in the work. And then we're going on in this relationship. We're getting to know each other. And I'm beginning to realize that there are lots of things that I just assumed that were there. So um, because he's a pastor, because he's a man of God, I just assumed automatically that everything that I stand for is what he stands for because our blueprint is the Bible. Yes. <laughs> no, man of God's blueprint was probably not the Bible to some point. To some level, it was. But to some point, it wasn't. Why? Man of God says, no, he doesn't have a um, he doesn't see any problem with sex before marriage because um once safe, forever safe. Basically, that was the uh, whole idea. He had scriptures backing whatever he was saying. But thank God for God that I'd read the Bible and I'd seen there that fornicators have their place in hell. Just that one scripture was what saved me from that whole relationship. So as much as God speaks, there is a yielding. And if people are not yielding to what God says, there is a replacement. If people are yielding to as well, just like in the case of Abraham, Abraham yielded to what God wanted him to do. And so God saw his heart and gave a replacement so he doesn't kill his son and give um, a lamb. So it's the same thing. If God is telling me, okay, this is the person and then we're relating and, and we're not compatible. We don't stand for the same things. We don't believe the same things. There'll be a replacement. It's just clear that one person is not yielding. So sometimes we get stuck in the whole idea that God spoke so it must happen. No. It is possible that it wouldn't happen. We are over spiritualizing some things that have physical parts to play. I need a whole lot of you. If you're watching this message today or listening to me, go to Mike Bamiloye's um, YouTube page and find the movie Costly Games. You need to watch that movie where this girl was playing. God had told her who she was supposed to marry and she was looking at the guy. The guy didn't just look like it. And the guy had also heard. The guy came and spoke to her. She wasn't giving him an answer and she wasn't accept. She was not saying yes. She wasn't saying no. And then she started playing this whole funny game thing because some new guy came to church and he was very wealthy and all. And then the guy was after her. And funny enough, this guy was after her only because he had a bet. And she was going on and going on. And one of her friends told her, okay, if you're interested in this other guy, you think this is the person that you're supposed to marry. Why can't you tell this other guy that, okay, you're not interested? She said, no, that she's not telling anything. She's it, in her mind. She was probably keeping this other guy like her backup plan. So if this rich guy doesn't end up with her, she knows that this one is spiritual enough. He's holding on to what God has said and everything. Oh no, sorry. God replaced her. By the time she was already stuck, she was, she was pregnant without getting married. The boy was laughing at her. The boy had dumped her. And then she wanted to call the other guy. Unfortunately for her, they were showing her a wedding invitation to the guy's wedding. And said, but you said God said, said ah, but God told me that I'd waited and waited and waited and you're not giving any answer. And I went back to God and told him that, I don't know, it looks like this guy is not interested in me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. God showed me another person. See, you cannot play. You cannot outsmart God. You cannot outsmart God. You cannot. So that God said doesn't mean that it would happen. When it comes to two people, you both need to be yielded to what God has said for it to happen. So even if God speaks and the other person is not yielding or you are not yielding, you'll be replaced, my darling. And so Apostle um, uh, um, Joshua Selman said that a lot of people have gotten into abusive and terrible relationships because they said God said. Yes, God said. We're not disputing. But are you compatible with the person? Do you people believe in the same thing? You can't be in a relationship with a man who says, ah, please, eh, what is this your thing that you're talking about fasting? I didn't they. Yes, we know that in marriage, God says that you should not fast without your, your, your spouse's consent. But it's like this one doesn't even want to hear about fasting. You want to speak in tongues. The person's like, eh, what is their nonsense that you're talking there? They don't believe in speaking in tongues. Haba. So because God said you get married to that kind of person, when you believe in the power of tongues, me, 
Sometimes when I can't pray, I just burst in tongues. The Holy Spirit helps us with groanings which cannot be altered so we can pray. Now, joke be that. What are you talking about? That was already a red flag for me. If the guy can be asking me for sex and then at some point he's just calm about it, there is a possibility he was getting it somewhere else. And this was not just there was a possibility. He was. He actually came and said it to me himself. For some weird reason, he came and confessed to me that there are three of us, you know, there are two others, but he... Yeah, really? So because God said I would stay in that kind of relationship, a guy who is double dating, or is triple dating, however you call it, a guy who believes in sex before marriage. Really? Because God said, no. We both have to be yielded and stand for the same things and believe the same things to get on together. It's not only about God said. It's the same thing when people go to churches or go for events or go for seminars and then prophecies are made. A man of God tells you that this same time next year, you're going to be in Dubai. You don't get passports. You don't get nothing. And then the whole year, you're only praying, thank God for the prophecy. I'll be in Dubai same times next year. Shebiyo, appear, disappear. You need to go do the work. Find out how much does it cost to go to Dubai? What does it take? What are the options? Is it school? Is it work? Is it um, um, visit? What is it? You need to find out those things. How much is a visa? How much is a passport? What do I need to make a passport? What are the documents I need? Because if God needs to bless you in that, it's someone who is going to make your passport for you. Say, for example, God says, okay, princess, you have to be the one to make Cynthia's passport. Okay? And then I come and ask you how much is a passport. You don't even know how much a passport is. You know, you could miss that blessing. Because you have no clue. You have to go and be preparing. As you're preparing and God is seeing you doing the things, taking the steps of faith, he now makes provision. You just go and sit and you're praying. Oh, Lord, thank you for my prophecy. This same time next year, I'll be in Dubai. Amen. Amen. And then next year, it doesn't happen because you didn't put the work. You said a man of God was not a, was not a real man of God. He was fake. No, now you be fake. Man of God just did what he had to do. You had to put the work in. Man of God wasn't planning to travel for you. He just gave the word. It was your part to follow up on that and connect with God on it and ask what needs to be done. Jesus said to his disciples, let's move on to the other side. Did he tell them about the storm? Nada. Did he know there was going to be a storm? Yes, he knew. Oh, sure he did. But he was calm in the storms. Did they get to the other side? Oh, yes. Did they put in some work? They did. By calling unto him. You have to put in the work. There is a place where you have a part to play. But some of us, we're so lazy. We don't want to play our part. It's just like everything should just fall on our laps. God should just mix it all and just put it in your hands. No. You would have to work. Put in the work. So don't get it twisted. People don't get it twisted. Oh, oh, might have got read something here. I missed that one. What did he say again? Okay, I think blasphemy could simply be any sin against the Holy Spirit, making a, uh, a mockery at God. Job 2 verse 9. Please, people, you can go ahead and read that. Thank you, Mr. Kika Carol. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Where people make fun of the Holy Spirit, a lot of people used to make um, some really silly jokes. At some point, it first, of, it first of all felt funny because it was just a joke. But when I sat and thought about it again, it wasn't so much of a joke to me because you can't be playing with the Holy Spirit like that. You know, saying some kinds of things like that about the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not right. So uh, we need to be very careful when it comes to that. And one people may be say 50 years. Hmm, what if you die before the 50 years? <laughs> Woman of God, see the rules and regulations in the old, they were really stringent. They were really, really stringent. And I, I just, I'm, I'm just glad that I wasn't born in that season, in that generation. I was born in the generation that I'm born in, where we have Jesus. 
and he came and did the things for us, you know, and made it better. And that's still practicing some countries in the Middle East today. You can get their land now and own, and then after you give it back. Wow, really? Interesting. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, a lot of uh, um, Asians and stuff, they still practice some of those things. They still practice some of those things. <laughs> but thank God for God, though. We, we are in the dispensation where we're saved and we're free. And some of us are taking it for granted. That's the painful part. Some of us are taking it for granted. And it's just not funny. It's just not funny. So, so not funny. So, God help us in Jesus' name. Um, I don't know if anybody has an addition but most of these things, when you make it relatable, when you bring the practical realities to our days, you're going to see that nothing is really new under the sun. The Bible says nothing is new under the sun. And it is the absolute truth. Nothing is new under the sun. It's the absolute truth. Believe it or not, nothing is new under the sun. So, people, I don't know about you, but it has been an awesome time on a chapter a day. Read the Bible and... Ask God to give you a personal revelation so that you can hold on to it. When you have a personal conviction about some things, you're not moved. That's why Abraham was going to sacrifice his son. And he didn't tell anybody. Sometimes what kills our fulfilling purpose or fulfilling our dreams is that we tell a lot of people. And some of these people don't see the way you see. These people are not God. These people are not the ones who are going to leave your vision for you so they might not really get it. So they might just water it down. So sometimes, when God just tells you, just step on it. Forget about what people think. It really doesn't matter. Believe me when I say so. Oh yeah, it really doesn't matter. It's what God thinks and says that matters. Okay? Okay, people. So let's stay connected. Let's stay on each other. Um, I always get to say I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live. I really, really do love you all. Tomorrow is going to be another day, Leviticus chapter 26. I'm hoping that we can read ahead of time and come back here and have a swell time together. If you still have an inspiration or a contribution to give, you can put it in the comment section and we'll be delighted. We'll be very grateful that you are a part of the session today tomorrow is another day get ready until tomorrow but let's pray father we thank you for your word we pray oh god that is going to be grafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts so we're going to walk thereby lord help us to be people who are going to put work to our faith it's not just going to be faith only because faith without works is there give us the grace and the um zeal and the desire to want to know you more so that we'll be able to hear you clearly and loudly and do that which you want us to do help us to be obedient because your word says obedience is better than sacrifice thank you heavenly father because i know you've heard and answered in jesus name we pray amen amen and amen until tomorrow ciao ciao Mwah.